Now, what we'll do, everybody comfortable with that? I mean, that's an overview. Any questions on that part of it so far? Anybody? No? Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. We're going to talk about side drifting when it comes up. And that side drifting thing will apply the same in spring as it does in the fall. What it has to do is just water temperature rising waters. Second half, when we get into the side drifting, that's when we'll talk about positioning yourself in different areas. One of the things you'll look for, guys, when you drive up the river, if you if you can't find these, and it's it's tough for me to you know to say because I have a lot of experience with it, and I just oh yeah, we just know we got to go here, and it, it's going to be tough for you to find them at first. And then like I said on the clear wall, a lot of times you're just going to see the people when you get in there and elbow in with them. Guys, what you're looking for when you go to the river, you're looking for natural funnels. I discovered this when I was a kid. Once I figured it out, it's about money every time. A funnel shaped like this, right? We put oil in our car, fuel in our lawnmower, or whatever, correct? If I throw some rapids into this and some slack water, where's the bottleneck at? Right in here, right? Natural funnels. That's a place that's going to congregate them. You'll see some of those stretches of the river, they're, you know, three quarters of a mile long, wide and slow. If you're up somewhere where the funnel's at, and just to give you an idea, there's two types. There's this way, the current's coming down like this. And this is obviously extremely exaggerated, but you'll have a riffle run through here. And then as the river goes down, it'll get wide. And then what happens at the taper? At the bottom end, it starts to taper again, it goes through another chute as it drops elevation, right? Well, <clears throat> where Chad and I were fishing, we obviously we had the rock to hold on, correct? What you had to draw it smaller and from up a high, you had a big sleeping corner like this, and then it kind of came down and it did this right here. There's a big old rock wall and whatnot in here, and it's just kind of sweeping down through, and then it turns like this. Well, down in here, you got a riff, pretty shallow. And right here, what you're going to see when you get to learn what your jig's doing, you're going to find these depressions. Chad and I would throw out, and all the fish that day were holding that seam that I showed you. But what can happen sometimes is as we drifted down through there, we had our rock was right in here. Remember, we're hitting this wall right in here. A lot of times what will happen is if those fish aren't up here, your bobber will be drifting and you're set good and all of a sudden you'll get right to here and you'll start hitting and it'll just start dragging, dragging, dragging. There's a depression right there. Well, what this area is, is it's a natural funnel. It's on the upside. These fish come charging up through here. They pull over to the side and they'll rest back here. If those fish are on the move at all, you'll catch fish in the backside. They're going to power through that riffle. They're going to come into that deep water where that depression starts and they're going to lay right there. When Chad and I were getting those fish, those fish had been sitting there for a while because we continued to drift down through here to where our bobber would start hitting, never got one bite because nothing was moving. If they're moving through, you can catch them at the back end of these where that depression starts to come up, that funnel's pushed them in, boom, they got to go there and rest. But when they're not moving, they're up here at the head. They're waiting for the next run of water to come through, and then they'll whop, go up through the next. You've got to look for those natural funnels. A lot of times you'll see them. There's one specifically just down from Orfino a ways. And you can look out in the river, and you just, I'm just going to draw it straight. It's like this. And out in the middle, there's a, there's a cropping of rocks right here. There's a deep seam that runs right here and one that runs right here. Those fish will power up and it picks up current right here. They'll power up and they'll sit right on this edge. It has to funnel them in. There's spots on the North Fork like that. That's only three quarters of a mile long. They get funneled in. That's where they're sitting at. They come through those sit. So whether it's a funnel at the top waiting for the next flow, which is what Chad and I dealt with, or they've moved and now they're resting and that they're at the tail end of it. You've got to find those natural funnels. What's going to give you the best odds to get on them? Where it's shrunk down. Don't you fish the tail outs in the morning for the fish to move the night? Yeah, the general rule of thumb is, and it works the same way for the rainbow trout and all that, 
you'll have your active fish at the front in the morning, and then in the evening time, you'll catch them at the back end when they're moving through. That's typically the rule. You fish the head, and then as they say, well, they get tired, and there's too much current pushing it backs them down. What it is is the next cycle of fish that have moved in. Head in the morning, tail in the evenings. Sometimes it pans, sometimes it doesn't. Now, this, uh, they haven't had have a pond, you know, they were still in during the show. Right. And, uh, they kind of set it up as natural as they could. You could see just the fact that you're talking about, about the rock situation. Right. But probably due to the fact of the oxygen in the water. Yeah. They have these water, you know, spouts coming Right, in. dropping in. Yeah, dropping in. But then in the other locations, and especially these other guys we're talking about during the seminar, is uh, they really like sitting under cover. Like, well, the, yeah, see, we don't have, a lot of the coastal streams have those cut banks and stuff. Our fish go sitting deep because the water's clear. When things are clear, fish get a little bit negative neutral, right? They want to go down and sit. When the water's muddy and running a little higher, there's more security blanket there. That's why guys at nighttime troll down below. When you're trolling in 8, 10 feet of water pulling a plug during the day, you're rarely going to get bit. That's why I put the planter boards on, to get it out of the way, because you're scaring everything out from underneath the boat. If you go down there at nighttime, it's dark, they feel more comfortable, they're more apt to bite when you go trolling across the top of them with a plug. It's a comfort thing. Right now the water is low and slow and cold and clear. And they're just hugging the bottom. Once it comes up, man, it's a whole different ball game. Now what lures are you using with the planer boards? The planer boards we'll talk about here in a second, but we're using the small Rapalas. Small Rapalas, yeah, small Yozuri stuff. No, uh, uh no, just just uh, small stick baits, trick baits. Yeah, you guys need some bait. Okay. All right, let's take a quick break, guys.